any layer that you work with or any geospatial data layer that you work with in QGIS has properties that are related to it. And it's very easy to access these properties. It's also actually very important that you know how to access the properties of any particular layer. Now, to access the properties of a layer, simply right-click that specific layer and say properties. Another way to access a layer's properties is to simply just double-click it. Now, the properties window that comes up won't necessarily show the exact same items for each particular layer. However, certain items are always listed. So the information tab, for example, will be present irrespective of which layer you access. So in this particular instance, I right clicked elevation, which is a raster layer, which gives me the dig digital elevation of that particular layer for the Overberg district municipality in the Western Cape. Now, the items under the layer properties window are shown on the left hand side here. So from information all the way to QGIS server. And all these tabs give you different information. Now, if you click on the information tab, you can see what the name of the layer is. So I know that it is the elevation layer. It gives you information of how where you can access it. So in this particular instance, this layer is stored in my downloads file folder under data, practical two data, and it's called the elevation.tif. So it's a TIFF file. The CRS stands for Coordinate Reference System, which is the coordinate system that is assigned to this particular file. It is a projected coordinate reference system in the UGM zone of 34 South with using the WGS84 coordinate system as a datum. The extent is the actual extent that the layer draws in on my map. So the left, right, top and bottom, the unit is in meters. Now the meters again tell me that it is a planar coordinate system, not a geographic coordinate system. It also gives me additional information in terms of what type of file is it. It's a geotiff. What is the bits that this particular raster can store? Where again is it located? So data set description is basically the path. And then it gives me additional information. So this particular raster only has one band, band one, and it gives me basic statistics here. For example, the minimum value for this particular raster is minus four. So the elevation for this raster extends from minus four all the way up to the maximum of 1,598 meters. So these units are related to the meters that are given in the units there. And then there is additional information given about this particular layer. If you scroll down, you can see information, extra information about the bands. For example, this is the band is called band one. The no data value is 32,764 and so forth. If you click on the source tab, this will give you information about the coordinate reference system that this layer draws in. You can change the symbology as well. This particular layer is drawn in a single band gray symbology, as you can see on your screen. You can change that by, for example, going to a pseudo color, um, just using the default here and accept, saying accept. You can see the layer now draws differently. You can change the transparency where you change how the layer draws. So you can alter whether or not you can actually see through the layer, if you want to call it that. You can generate a histogram on the values that it has. So if you have a look at this here, so this creates a graph of the rest of histogram that the majority of the pixels here are actually round about or very close to zero. So round about um, 200. If you go to the information tab, you can see that the mean here is roughly 276. And the histogram, you can see that the predominant value is about in that range as well, with very few values extending into the very high um, values of a thousand or greater meters above sea level and so forth. So the layer properties give you a lot of very important information about any particular layer.
this was an example of a raster layer, you could do the same with the vector layer. So for example here, if you right click the protected areas, protected areas and click on properties, similar information is available to you again. However, the raster has more options in this case, but many of the items remain the same. The information tab gives the same kind of information. The layer is called protected areas. You can access it again in the downloads folder. It's a shape file. This is simply the format of this particular layer. It is a polygon vector. In this instance, it's again in UTM zone 34 south. It gives you the extent as well. The unit is in meters and it has 359 unique entries within this particular feature layer. If you scroll down under the fields, it will tell you what is stored in the attribute table. For example, here it has various fields, object ID all the way through to GIS area. It tells you what the type is of these particular fields. For example, is it a string, which is text, or is it a number, which is, for example, real, and so forth. If you go to the source, again, it will tell you information about the coordinate reference system. You can change it to symbology as well. For example, if I want the protected areas to now look hashed like that, I just simply click on the symbol, say apply, and the protected areas have changed in how they look. I can also label them and so forth. There's lots of functionality here. And all of this is accessed by accessing the attribute table of your particular layer. And this concludes this video.